So I took a little extra time today to set up the camera and I think it actually finally worked. Um, so for some reason it was starting to get like weird, wonky, uneven. So hopefully this view is a little bit more even for you guys. Uh, I'm going to give it one more minute and then we'll get started. Um, all you need for this class is a block, if you want one, for comfort, and a strap. All you need. Oh, who's here? Hey, Elizabeth! Um, so, like a pair of leggings or strap if you have it, and just a block or like, I don't know, cushion or, it's just for comfort. So, whatever feels, whatever you would like. Hmm. Uh, it's been quiet here in person, so... Um, sometimes we've been having, you know, our, our regulars and sometimes it's been a little bit quieter. Um, tonight's one of those quiet nights. I think because of the rain. I mean, it's here. Don't apologize. Don't worry about it. Take your time. Take your time. No, I did the same thing. Don't even worry about it. I think with the rainy weather, I like, I don't know. And I was on the phone with Amazon and then, yes, I, just, like, the and then I just like totally forgot too, so don't worry. Um, I just think it's been quiet. Is Monica coming today? Or is she still? I have, to, I have to message her. We gotta start getting a crew back in here. It's been a little quiet lately. I think it is like, it's like reminding people. Because my mom keeps saying she wants to come. And then every day around like, you know, 5.55 when I leave, I'm like, oh, you want to come? She's like, oh, I totally forgot. So I have to like remember to remind her in the morning. All right, I'm just going to shut this door. And then we'll get started. So I am trying to figure out a way to maybe restructure my classes a little bit. And I, or not like restructure them, but improve them. But I usually like really suck at when I plan a class. I'm really bad at teaching it, like when it's on paper. I'm usually better with like figuring it out as we're moving. So I am gonna try to do paper and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm, I'm not good at it on paper. I don't know, cause then I feel like I can't like, it doesn't flow as easily to me. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, like. It depends on, 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 and, on how you feel and, 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 and how, yeah, you. Yeah, it's just the same with your teacher lessons, yes. right? Like when you have like a well thought out plan for a class, yeah. And it's so hard to follow. Like it just it messes up the way I teach. So, but I but I am gonna try to get a little bit better at it. Maybe if I do it this way in a little while, I'll be able to like you know not have to use the paper so much. But I am trying to like work on targeting more specific muscle groups. And then like normally we do like a full body in my classes. So we're kind of going all all over the place, which is great. But I kind of want to start maybe targeting some more specific areas. Um, so that we see more improvement in, you know, a specific area by the be uh, beginning of class to end of class. So, that's my goal. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so sitting up on your block, if you're on a block. If you're just on your bum, just sit on your bum. And close your eyes if that feels comfortable to you and just start taking those breaths. I'm going to switch up my playlist next week too, I think. I'm getting a little tired of this playlist. Taking a deep breath in through the nose and exhaling out. Inhale through the nose and exhaling it out. Rolling the shoulder blades up to the ears and back. Rolling up to the ears and back. Up to the ears and back. Allow your shoulders to drop. Allow the crown of your head to lift, sitting nice and tall on your block. Slow the breath down. You're here. You've made it. You're on your mat. Allowing your breath to be however it needs to be in your body right now. But just paying attention to it. Maybe for the first time today. Giving it some attention, some acknowledgement. Drawing the breath in through your nose. 
and out through your mouth. Reminding yourself that throughout your practice, throughout your day, you can always turn back into this constant, your breath. happens whether you're paying attention or not, but when you do pay attention, you can relax and take focus away from whatever is creating you distress or uncomfortableness or whatever and tune into the breath that's always there. Our eyes blink gently open as we take an inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, arms come down, the gaze comes down. So adding movement to that breath, drawing the breath in, arms up. Exhale, gaze down, arms down. One more time, inhale those arms up. And then arms down, gaze down. If you're on a block, get off your block and stretch your feet out in front of you. No strap for this, not even really coming forward. You're just going to bring your hands down to your sides and creep them out as far as they go. Now, for me, I have really tight hamstrings, like, all the time. So, my first forward fold, I'm not going past my knees. But if you are, like, if you're, like, far down, go far down. I just, you don't have to copy me. This is just literally where I am, flexibility-wise. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, right? That's what, yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah, you don't have to copy me. If you, get, if you can go further, go further. I just have no flexibility. All right, we'll walk it back up. Sitting nice and tall, maybe even taking a minute to press the hands down at your hips to help you lengthen in the spine, and then walk those fingertips out a little bit further. Now try flexing those toes back, really engaging the back of the legs, starting to wake them up, getting them a little bit more, I'm not going to say loose, we're just going to say awake, awake. And hands come back one more time, inhale, sit tall, exhale, walk forward. Maybe your hands moved a little bit, maybe they didn't at all. Either case is okay. As you come back up, bring your hands behind you, fingertips pointing away, right ankle to the left knee, and then that left foot comes down. It's really interesting because I did that, that like seated to this pose yesterday morning, and my foot was like all the way out here. In the morning, it's just like crazy that even if you feel like you're not flexible when you come onto the mat, you still have a level of flexibility at the end of the day versus like the beginning of the day. Yes. Just naturally from moving around throughout the day. Slide that left foot down, right foot comes down, left foot left, or right knee, and then slide the right foot down. Just taking your pigeons. Moving slow. Now you also don't have to sway side to side. If you prefer to just be uh, stagnant, right? And move the chest forward, you can do that as well. You can play with both, see what you like better. And then slide the right foot down. I'm just gonna take my hoodie off really quick. But you are going to bring the hands back behind you, fingertips pointing away from the bum. And I'm going to go sideways so you guys can see. Planting the soles of the feet onto the ground, fingertips back, pointing away. Now step your feet in so that like if you were laying down, your feet are where they would be in bridge pose. So not like, not far out, not super close in, you know, just, just normal. You can adjust once we go up, but we're going to lift the hips up. Now try to get your belly button in line with your shoulders, so really squeezing the glutes and pushing up. And then lowering all the way down. Taking an inhale, lifting all the way up. And now this time lean towards your knees. Get a little bit deeper of a shoulder stretch here. And lower back down. And last time, take an inhale, lift up. Drop the head back, squeeze the booty, see if you can lift a little bit higher. And lower all the way down. Turning your fingertips towards you if that's more comfortable. I, I think I still like them out. I have more stability. But whatever you need to do, just windshield wipering the legs. I'm going to switch back this way again. So just going side to side. 
Let's do like 10 more wherever you're at. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Beautiful. Laying down onto your back, hugging your knees in. And we're going to take three rock ups. And that last rock up is going to be the stand. So if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, you can watch me really quick. So rock up. You're bringing your feet back. You're walking, walk, <laughs> rocking along your spine. And then for that last one up, plant the feet. Woo, and lift the booty if you can. Sometimes you need to give yourself a little bit more of a rock to get up. Yeah, there you go. Grabbing that strap, getting right into strap work. If you don't have a strap, you can just follow along with the arm motions, or you can use a pair of um, leggings, sweatpants, sweatshirt, whatever. Okay, so first one, you're going to go, you're going to do the tight shoulders. So about shoulder distance apart. Take an inhale, reach those arms up, and back. Stretch, 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 and forward. Inhale, reach back. And forward. And now this time, I want you to bring your hands up towards the sky. And then slide the arms back. So pushing your head forward. Good. And down. Making a Y with your arms. Uh, if you don't have a strap but you do have weights, you can do the same thing with weights that we're doing right now. So you can do weights for this one. Reach the arms up. Pull the strap apart, and then draw the elbows into the chest. And up, draw the elbows into the chest. And up, one more time, draw the elbows in. Okay, now stay here. I'm going to drop my strap because I'm going to need more space. Go ahead and lengthen the grab. Oh, sorry, guys, I messed up. Pull on me. Okay. Go ahead and slide your hand down the strap to stretch the arms. Strain the arms. That's what it's supposed to look like. But this strap is like really too long, if I'm being honest. Reach the arms back. Stretch them out. Arms come up and around. Let that strap go. And coming to stand at the top of the mat. Of course, like the lighting. It's making it so I can't even see it. Okay. That's why I hate it. That's why I'm not great with these. Okay. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, take a forward fold, bring it all the way down. Very good. Early forward fold here. Go ahead and bend your knees and straighten. Bend your knees and straighten. Take another bend here and straighten. Hang that forward fold. Now I know it's early, so hands might come up for this, but I want you to take your right foot and cross it over your left ankle. So you're crisscross your legs. Yeah. And your arms, they might come up. That's totally fine. You might want to bend because this is a pretty deep stretch early on. So if you need to bring your hands up, bring your hands up. Just take an inhale and an exhale. An inhale and an exhale. Let's do one more inhale, exhale on this side. And then on, cross those ankles. Hang in your forward fold. Cross the left over the right this time. Once again, maybe the hands come up. Totally fine. Let the head hang heavy. Three deep breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, and exhale, last inhale, exhale, uncross. Deep bend in the knees, dropping opposite elbows, hang in that forward fold. And release the arms here. Straightening out those legs. Inhale, bend the knees. Arms come out so you're in your chair. We're going to bring our arms to our knees. We're going to do 10 squats. So lift for one, lower. Two, lower. Three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Bring your right foot up with you and step that right foot back, coming into your high lunge. Ooh. High lunge, ooh, high lunge lunges here. So lower and lift for four, three, two, and one. Step it up. Ooh, my balance is off tonight. And down. Left knee comes up and high. Step left leg back. Lower for five, four, three, two, and one. Lift up, come back forward, reach the arms up. And exhale into your forward fold. Set the right leg back, set the left leg back, lower the knees down to your tabletop. Take an inhale here, lift the chin. Exhale forward, or not forward fold, sorry, chin to chest. Inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. One more inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Tuck the toes under. Send the seat back towards the heels. Reach your fingertips forward. Lower the chest in between the arms here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now go ahead and drop the forearms onto the mat, getting a little bit deeper into the shoulders. All right, press into those hands, lift the knees down dog. Come up high onto tippy toes and sink your heels. Come up high onto tippy toes and sink your heels one more time. High on tippy toes and sink your heels. Now walk one step in, shorten your down dog here, and then cross your right ankle in front of your left. Take that cross leg down dog. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale, switch back. And then flip the left ankle in front of the right. Just two breaths here. I know you might be getting tired. Deep breath in. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Uncross those legs. Pull forward into your plank. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, forward into plank. Lowering all the way down. Rise up, baby cobra. Lower down. Inhale, full cobra all the way up. And down. Tuck the toes. Come back into your child's pose. Take a breather here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Press into the hands, lift the knees up, down dog. Right leg comes up and high. Bend your right knee, bring it in between your hands. Step that foot down. Back heel comes down as you rise to your warrior one. So back heel is at a 45 degree angle. Those toes are pointing towards the top left corner of the mat. The hips are squared off, the arms are up. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Now straighten that front leg. Bring the hands to the hips. Take an itty bitty step closer with the back leg, and then forward fold into that front thigh. Now bend in the front knee a little bit here, because it's less about getting down, and it's more about getting really into the back of that front leg. Reach your arms forward and lift up. Good. Step the back foot forward, taking an inhale here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway look up. Forward fold. Right leg comes back. 
The left leg comes back. We're in our plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, down dog. Left leg comes up and high. Bend that left knee, step it in between the hands. Back foot plants down. Rise up, warrior one. See, I feel like, like I hate saying inhale, exhale. Like I get like bored. That's why I feel like I don't really hold poses that long because like, I don't know what to say as a teacher. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Sometimes inhale. you forget to breathe. I guess I'm supposed to, right? Like remind you to breathe. I don't know. It just seems like... I don't I'm not kidding. If I don't, I don't. If I don't say I'm... it, you don't do it. No. <laughs> okay. No. Then I will say it. All right. Straight in the front leg. Hands come to the hips. Baby, step that foot in a little bit closer, and then move forward. Move the belly button towards the thigh. Micro bend in that front knee. Not only will it let you get more comfortable, but it'll help you shift that hip back, moving your right hip a little bit further forward towards the top of your mat. So you're squaring those hips. Beautiful. Reach your arms forward. It's a balance here. And strengthen your core. And then rise back up. Set the back foot forward. Inhale. Reach those arms up. Exhale. Forward fold. Hang in your forward fold for a beat. See if you're a little bit lower than you were before. Hopefully. I'm a little bit lower. Not a lot. A little bit. Left foot steps back. Right foot steps back. And we're in our planks. Lowering all the way down onto our bellies. Right arm comes out to the side. Right ear comes down. Spatula on the right side. Bring your left arm up and over. If you'd like to lace fingers, you don't have to do that. You can keep that left hand planted. And back to center. Left arm comes out to the side. Left ear comes down. You can take that right hand, reach it back to lace if you want. I have a harder time doing it on the shoulder. I have a hard time doing it on the right. Yeah? Uh-huh. Like I feel like my head lifts up on this side. I can't keep my head down. And back to center. Coming back to tabletop. All right, right arm, or right leg comes out to the side and lower. Right leg lifts and lowers. Right leg lifts and lowers. Right leg lifts, left arm comes forward. Lower, lift, lower. Lift, lower, lift. Left hand comes down, reach the right leg out. Lower, and lift, lower, and lift, lower, and lift. Left arm comes up, last time. Oh. Lower, oh. and lift, lower, and lift, lower, and lift. Foot comes in, hand comes in, take a child's pose. And so we don't realize how much we lean to the other side mm -hmm. until we take that option out. <laughs> Back to the tabletop. That's why it's good every now and then. So think about less as like that you need to do that exercise and more about a reminder that every time we do exercises like that, try to square yourself. Try not to lean as much. Mm. All right, hands come down. Left leg comes out to the side. And lower, lift, and lower, lift, and lower. Lift, right arm forward. Lower, lift, lower, lift, lower. Hand comes down, lift the right, or the left, sorry, and stretch it out. Tap down, and lift, tap down, and lift, tap down, and lift. Right arm comes forward. Tap, lift, tap, lift, tap, lift. Foot comes in, hand comes in, take a child pose. All right, moving right along. Tuck the toes under, down dog. 
Right leg comes up and high. Look at the left leg. We're focusing on the left leg. So bend that left knee and straighten. Bend the left knee and straighten. Bend the left knee and straighten. Reach that right leg up a little bit higher. Bend the right knee. Bring it to the outside of the right hand. Yeah, coming into your high lizard. Now if this is a little tight in your hips, you can go ahead and grab your blocks and just lift yourself up a little bit more. We're just going to be here. Good. Lower the back knee down. Untuck the back toes. Walk the leg back. Now here today, I want you to actually not lower all the way down. I want you to keep yourself up as high as you can. Bring those toes back, and I want you to squeeze the shoulder blades behind you, giving yourself a flat back. Try not to curl in. So flat back here. Walk yourself forward. Keep that flat back. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Walk your hands back. Flat back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. And forward. Heart comes forward. And last time, leg comes all the way back. Now come forward. Tuck your back toes under, lift up, Okay, now I don't think we've ever done this in this class, but this foot is not going to hit the ground. You're going to lift it all the way back into your three-point dog. So take an inhale, exhale, shoot it all the way up into your three-point dog. Lower it down to the mat. Left leg comes up and high. Now gaze comes to the right leg. Bend the right knee and straighten. Bend the right knee and straighten. Bend the right knee and straighten. Lift the left leg a little bit higher. Bend it, bring it all the way to the outside of the left hand. Nice. All right, lower that back knee down. Lift up. Walk the hands back. Remember, say hi here. Lift the toes, pull the chest forward. And walk your hands forward. Walk your hands back. Walk your hands forward. And one more time, walk the hands back. Walk the hands forward. Tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee. Take that left leg, inhale. Exhale, shoot it all the way up, bring it down. Baby step those feet in a little bit closer. Cross the right over the left. Take an inhale and an exhale. An inhale and an exhale. Take that right leg, send it all the way back up. Three point down dog. Bend the right knee, bring it in between the hands. Lower the back knee on Janasana. We're going to do wrist care after this because I know your wrists are probably starting to hurt. Inhale, lift up. Exhale down. Tuck the toes under. Send that right leg back to your down bow. Baby step in a little bit. Left foot to the outside of the right foot. So crisscross. Two breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Take that left leg. Shoot it up. Three point down dog. Bend the knee. Bring it in between the hands. Lower the back knee down. Inhale, rise up. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Bring your hands down to the mat. Just slide that foot down. Doing a little bit of wrist care. Fix your clothes if you need to. Hands come together. I always do. I feel like in between everything, I'm like readjusting. Here. Uh, hands clasped together, figure eights. You can go slow, you can go fast, whatever you feel like. Reverse the direction. Nice. Hands come apart. And roller coaster one way. I love the rivers with my kids. Roller coaster the other way. Yeah, can they do the other way? They can switch it? Uh, they did this way. And Let's down, see. shake it out. And up and down. All right. Grab your strap. 
And actually, we can do this on our knees for a little bit to give ourselves a little bit of a break. Okay. Shoulders distance apart. Inhale, lift up. Pull your head through. So you don't have to go all the way back. Just pull the head through and lower it down. Inhale, all the way up. Pull the head through and down. And last time, all the way up. Pull the head through. And now pull the strap apart as you side bend over to the right. And back to center, pull the strap, side bend over to the left. And back to center, pull the strap a little bit wider so you're in your Y now. Elbows come down and up. Elbows come down and up. Elbows come down. Now this time instead of straightening, just pull your arms exactly how they are in that like, that goal post arm, pull the strap back further. Feel the stretch all along the chest and up and down. As wide as you need to go, inhale up and rotate back, inhale up and forward, inhale up and rotate back, and inhale up. And forward. One more time. Inhale. Rotate back. And forward. All right. Now, today we are going to do a short, like five minutes, handstand with the wall. All right. Now I'm going to show you. I'll do it here. I'm going to show you. Um, so, Elizabeth, if you don't want to do this at home on your own, just go ahead, take a break, drink some water, listen to what I'm, like, the, the um, alignment kind of cues, and then just do what you want to do. Don't do anything. But if you do want to try it, coming up to the wall, bring your mat close, because your mat will help you so you don't grip. I mean, yeah, you can go right up to this wall. Okay, so we have two levels. We have one if you can kick up. I'm gonna show two if you can't kick up. That's the one I'm gonna do first. So if you can't kick up, you're gonna lean, you're gonna come up to the wall, toes are at the wall. Hands come down, and then you just lift your knees up and walk your feet up the wall. Just practice holding yourself. Practice getting strength in your arms. You can start to lower your feet the stronger you feel, and just work on that. So you could just do that. Totally fine. So. <laughs> so. Lift your knees. You know what? You're not as close as you think you are. Okay. Yeah, feet come to the wall. Uh huh. Now just straight. No, keep your toes down. Keep your toes down first. Uh -huh. Straighten like you're doing a really short down dog. No. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then just bring the knees up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now start to lower your feet down a little bit more. You can bend your knee. Here, I'm going to come down really quick. So there's a, okay, so, okay, so watching Amina, that gave me a couple more cues for you guys. Okay, so you come up. I'm trying to think. So I'm going to shorten down dog. So if you have, because as weird as it sounds, you feel a little claustrophobic when you're close to the wall, but you actually want to be closer to the wall. The farther away you are, the way harder it is to hold yourself on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're, you're, um, gravity is against you mm -hmm. the further you're away. But I do know that there's a fear element. So do what you got to do. Be a little bit further if you need to. But just know that if you can get over the claustrophobia, it does make it easier when you're a little bit closer. So, hands come down. Your feet are at the wall. And now I do straight, like I just lift my knees first. Okay. So that's what I was saying. That's like when we walk in, when we're about to do our jumps. Remember how I always say to get your shoulders in line? That's what you want to do. So, yeah, so if you are, yeah. Then, let me move my hands out a little bit more so that could be like a little bit more wherever it's at. You take one foot and you step it onto the wall. So your toes are down, your knee is bent. Press into the wall and then step your other foot down. So the objective is actually to get more into an L 
than uh, it is to bring your feet all the way up uh, so that you're straight. You are actually working towards that L shape. So do your down dog first. Yeah. Now step one foot. Keep the sole of the foot against the wall. Keep the sole of the foot. Yeah. And now press the sole of the foot. Yeah. Okay, now press the bottoms of the feet into the wall. And try to get... Try to get them. Try to get them. Straighten those legs. Straighten those legs. Straighten those legs. Yeah. There you go. And then you can walk the feet down when you get tired. Okay, See, it's a little bit I, easier. I did not have enough space. I lost a effect of the flip over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might need to be further away. But like I said, like, that's really going to take a toll on your upper body. Not in that way. It'll make you stronger in the long term. But it is, like, way more exhausting. It's almost like holding a plank with your feet lifted. Like, that's the equivalent. So the closer that you get, the, the more you're aligned and the less you're, you know, when your joints are stacked, you're doing less work. Now, the last thing that I will say... And then we'll and then we'll move on. Is when you do this stuff. Okay, so this is more of a strength training in your shoulders, so that we can spin around and get up to the wall. But you do want to push. So like my, the ball of my feet is on the wall, and then eventually I do put my whole foot to push. Like I'm pushing against the wall. Like I'm using the wall. Don't try to pretend like you have to do it without the wall. Like, use the wall. Okay. So you're up. And then I'm, like, pressing against the wall to keep myself up. Mm -hmm. So my butt is kind of going back. And then when I feel strong, then I can move myself forward. All right. Now, if you do have that, I'll show you the kick up really quick. But we won't even really concentrate on that. We'll just, we'll just so in case you want to, like, try it at home. All right. So when you're kicking up... You want to be about one forearm's distance away. Maybe a little bit more, but if you do a little bit more, you are going to be back bending to get to the wall. Okay, so your hands come down. Booty comes up. You take your steps in. Reach one foot up. Draw it in. Take an inhale. And then you come up. Go on. I didn't think it was that close. Ooh. I'm getting, like, nervous because this is the first time I'm doing it in front of somebody. Okay. One more time. Whoa. There we go. Okay. So once you're up, push into the ground, straighten your arms, and you can start to pull back if you'd like to, or you can just hang there. Doing handstands without the wall is pretty scary. I'm not at that bad. <laughs> but... Yeah, trust that the wall's there. So if you come a little further, you won't be able to back bend because you're still going to hit this wall. And then when you've had enough, you know, you push off the wall. Amina's going to, did you want to try it? I do want to try it. <laughs> you do or you don't? I do. Okay, Amina's going to give it a go and then we'll move oh, on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Come back further from the wall. You're super okay. close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like do that like kind of forearms distance as a way to judge where you want your hands to be. Yeah. So do your down dog. Good. Walk whatever foot in. And do whatever foot you feel the most comfortable with. Like kicking up from. Uh, uh, bend it? Well, bend the standing leg. So whatever is the stronger standing leg. Yeah, and then push off that thing. Yeah! Okay, but now you can go like way more. You, you were testing it. That was a test. But you helped yourself. I know. Was it too hard? I, I just have to be stable on my mind. Like you know what the thing is? So here's the one thing that I will say. And, and this takes doing it a couple times. But one, you have to trust that the wall will actually... So what happens is sometimes you hit the wall and you panic because you didn't realize that the wall was there. But just remember that you do, in fact, want to hit the wall. So like once you hit the wall, lean into it. I like, don't, scared. yeah, because you got scared. I know. And that's the one thing. The one thing that I will say is, it's scary, but whatever you do, try to keep your hands from buckling. Because that's what's going to, like, 
not necessarily injure you, but coming down is what's going to injure you. Like as long as your arms are straight, let your feet flip wherever they have to flip. Let them flip to the side. Let them flip back. Like let yourself fall back. Try not to crumple down. So that is the one thing. Yeah, that's the one thing that I will say is whenever you do this, really try to press into the hands so that if everything else goes wonky, this line stays as strong as it can be. Can you to show me one more time? Sure. I'm going to show one more time and then we'll, we'll do the next thing. Okay. So hands come down. Feet come up. Walk your feet in. And I bring my right leg up because I'm better at kicking up from my left wow knee. So my right leg comes up, my gaze is in between my thumbs, I take an inhale, exhale, and then even like so in the beginning when I did this and it scared the crap out of me, I've learned to push into the hands. So even if you lose your balance, your feet come down. Always let your feet drop. Always let your feet drop. Like, don't worry about it, because you're, because you're not going to flip over because the wall's there, so either it's going to send you that way, or it's going to send you that way, and that way. So we'll practice, next week we'll practice, like, like semi-cartwheels for, like, when you think you're falling, how to throw yourself out of it so that you don't crumple down. So that was good that you showed me that, because I didn't realize that that was, like, something that we need to work on. Okay, hands down. Come back to receive. Being gentle on the rest. That was it. That was the scariest thing for today. You did it though. You did it. I'll try again. How was your wrist? Was it okay? It was okay. Uh -huh. Came down a little hard on it. Yeah. But you held your head up. Where is it? Your head didn't hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good because <laughs> Amina always scares the crap out of me. Like Amina <laughs> is literally that like you bring your hand forward. And take one back. It's like the epitome of like the people that I'm afraid to teach handstands to. Because even if I think I'm prepared, she does something that I just like, she's going to like potentially snap her neck and it scares the crap out of me. I think because you're, you're like kind of fearless. I know. Until you do something and then you get scared. I know. So she goes I'm up. I'm going to try one. I'm going to she goes up way too hard and then freaks out when she's up there. And it uses all this power to get up there. All right, and down. All right. Coming down into, what should we do? Let's do our down dog. So come back into your down dog. Good. Press back into the down dog. Taking a shortened down dog here. And then bring your knees down and come into a child's pose. So we're going to do a, a deep shoulder down dog. We're going to try it. So coming down into that active child's pose that we always do, hands are on the mat, forehead's on the mat, but elbows are lifted up. Now keep those knees in close, tuck the toes under, and try to lift your knees up without lifting your head. I can't do it. Oh. But, I mean, I mean, you might be able to. You have really... Without lifting my head? Yeah. Leave your head down. Oh! And try to lift your knees. I can't. <laughs> you can lift your head a little bit, but try to do, try to keep your head as low to the ground as you can. Okay, now see if you can lower your head a little bit. I can't. Yeah, you're so close, though. <laughs> and knees come down. You know what you can do? Because you, I think, have the shoulder flexibility. You don't have the, the your your uh, quads are tight. So you can bend your knees a little bit. So do like, so come into your child's pose, head down, mm -hmm. and then just lift your knees up a little bit, keeping your head down like this. Hmm. Press up from your forearms. Don't, don't have your forearms down. Bend the knees oh. so you can get your head down. Oh. Here I come back down. <laughs> You bet the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, so so do uh, okay. So child's pose, right? Head comes down, and now press into the hands. Keep the elbows up. Lift the knees. I mean, my elbows were bent a little bit, but that's because I have crappy um, shoulders. So lift the arms up now. See if you can lift the arms. Keep the head down. 
and down. It's just to play with. Good, all the way down. Knees down, arms down, child's pose, regular rest. Apparently that's like the traditional down dog is to actually have your head on the ground. Oh wow. Yeah, I can't do that. My shoulders wow. are not open enough for that. Yeah. And pulling forward into our sphinx pose. Bring your forearms forward here. Draw the chest forward. Bring the right leg in and back. So you can draw that thigh down. And down. Left leg forward. And bring the foot down. And down. Bring your hands to your chest. Downward facing dog. Walk the feet all the way forward. Good. Hang your forward fold. And then bend your knees, come into your squat. So bring your hands to your hips. Lift up, come up onto your tippy toes. Heels down, squat. Lift up, tippy toes. Heels down, squat. So we got three. Lower, four. Lower, five. Lower. Bring your hands down. Right leg comes back. Left leg comes back. Knees come down. Okay, so we're going to do one thing, Elizabeth, this might be a little tough because of your hips, but do what you want to do, take a break, and then we're going to do two final poses using the crisscross legs. The two final poses are going to feel good, and, and you'll, I'm sure, be able to do them even with your hips. So if you want to kind of sit out this one, I get it. All right, hands come down. Take your right foot, so it's the outside of your right hand. All right, now take this right hand, send it back. See if you can grab your foot. Yeah, you can grab, you can go on top of it. Yeah, now you can actually even grab your strap in a minute if you feel like you want the strap more. Because then you're going to lean, left forearm comes down, lean into the left forearm, and lift your right leg out to the side. Oh, shoot. I think you can do it. Lift it up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you did it! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yeah. You did it though! It's a balance thing. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you want to try that side again? Okay. Before we do the other one? Uh, okay, so right foot comes to the outside of the right hand. Left forearm comes down. Right foot comes up. Or left foot comes up. No, I have my right foot in front. Oh, yeah, right foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing the same side again one more time. Left foot comes up. Right hand reaches for the left foot. Lean over onto that left forearm so that you can lift your right toes up and then stretch them out. Yeah, now lean onto the forearm. Lean, 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 lean. Yeah. You don't have to strain it. You can just let, yeah, there you go. And down. Nice. All right, we're going to try the other side. Okay. You did it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a balance. All right, and yeah. left foot comes forward. Right forearm comes down. Right knee comes up. Left hand grabs for that right foot. Lean over to the right so that the foot lifts up. And you don't even have to strain it. You can just lift. You can just lean and lift. And then if you wanted to stretch it out, you can stretch it out. But you can just like lift it. Yeah! And down. She did it. Nice. All right, stretch your legs out in front of you. Inhale, reach your arms up, and forward fold. See where you are now. Hopefully you're like way further than you were at the beginning. Walk the hands back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Walk the hands back. One more time, reach the arms up, and forward fold. Beautiful. All right, bring the hands back. Fingertips away from the body. Take your right ankle, bring it over your left, 
And now you're going to lift your booty up, so you're going to do a reverse plank. So in the beginning of class, we were doing reverse tabletops. Mm -hmm. Same principle. You're going to leave your ankle, that left ankle is going to stay on the ground, but you're going to lift your hips and your legs up off the mat. Okay, ready? So take an inhale. Exhale. Just lift. And lower down. And then switch the legs. Take an inhale. Exhale. Lift up. So you can get the hips a little bit higher. And lower down. Beautiful. Crisscross those legs through. Coming into your down dog. Moving into pigeon. So lift that right leg up and high. And bring the right leg through. Nice. Now just kind of settle on back in there. Inhale, reach up in the chin. And then exhale, forward fold. Okay, I'm going to see if we can do a shoulder thing here, but I can't remember if I'm going to do it the right way. No. Okay, you're going to take your left arm and send it across the right. And then twist, like bring the left shoulder onto the mat so your gaze is towards your right. And then take that right hand up and around and see if you can grab your right foot. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, it's closer, it's closer than you think. No. No, not the not the, the, the one that's bent in front of you. Oh. But bring it towards your back. Yeah, and then see if you can reach for your toes. No, I can't. You can twist more towards that foot, less towards the ground. If you want to look up, Amina. You see, I'm like more opening the chest. Okay. No, I have okay. this thing, this thing one. That's okay. It's just a, th yeah, so you can just bring it to your lower back and open up. And then bring the right hand down. Bring it in front of your face because it's impossible to get out of this twist if you're not. And it pushes the other way. That one took me a while. I like could never get out of that twist. All right, tuck the back toes under. Right leg comes up. Left leg comes forward. Or up, sorry, and then comes forward into your pigeon. And then send it back. Take an inhale, look up. Exhale, forward fold. Now, as always, everything is just for fun. So if at any point you just want to chill, just chill. So I mean you can do you can stay on that side or you can try to do the twist on the side if you want. So if you want to do a twist, right arm comes down. And it's like that thread the needle. So your right ear comes down, not necessarily your forehead. Left arm reaches up towards the sky, back towards your lower back, and then see if you can grab those toes. The left hand is grabbing the left toes. Let that go. Bring that left hand in front of your face. Push into that left hand to get yourself up. Slide onto your left hip, bring your feet forward. And then we're just going to windshield wipe our legs. Okay, got one more thing and then that's it. And we're in Savasana. So we're going to take a shoulder stand tonight. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to go for the crisscross ankles, you can. Now shoulder stands are still a little inversion. Um, they are just a little bit more doable, I think, than other inversions. So I will show you how to do them. So you lay on your back. You don't have to lay down yet. Just watch first. All right. Hands come down to the sides. And now I get up and like kind of, it's kind of hard to describe it because there's not really an easy way to say you're getting up. You're kind of just popping up and then you're grabbing your lower back with your hands. So I typically, I typically, I guess, start on my tippy toes just to give myself a little bit more launch, I guess. I don't know. Okay, it's really hard to describe this. <laughs> no, I guess I bring my knees into my chest. And then I press my fingers into the ground as I lift my knees. Yeah, I guess that's more it. Okay, so I bring my knees into my chest. Fingertips are pushing into the ground. Legs are shooting up. And then once my legs are up, I grab my hands to my lower back, press my hips forward, reach those toes up towards the ceiling. So then if you want to go for the ankle, 
crisscross, you just do it all so pretty, it's like an Instagram picture. <laughs> and you can switch the legs. And then you can just stay there if you want. Drawing the toes closer and closer towards the ceiling. And then whenever you're ready, you slowly come down. Nice, Amina. Nice, nice, nice. Draw the knees uh, in. And then just lower. Yes, yeah, so you can do plow pose if you want. That's bringing your feet back behind your head. Or you could just bring the feet down in front of you. Oh, I haven't done this in a long time. I haven't done anything. Like that. Yeah, we haven't done I've done. We haven't done. We used to do like really intense stuff. Yes. Like yeah. <laughs> We're going to go back to that slowly, slowly, yes. start easing it back in. Okay, go ahead and lay down onto your back. I usually do it at home. Mm. I get so lazy. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to do it at home. All right, taking a deep inhale. Exhale, letting the breath go, laying down onto your back. Wiggling your fingers and your toes, maybe turning in the wrists a bit, turning in the ankles. And then letting it go. Deep breath in. Exhale, let your body become heavy. Deep breath in. Let your body be heavy. Slowly begin to deepen the breath, drawing breath back into the body, wiggling the fingers and wiggling the toes, reaching the hands back behind you, giving yourself a full body stretch, inhale, and then exhale, drawing the knees to your chest, hugging it close, before rolling over onto your favorite side, whatever side of the body that is, and then taking the opposite hand across the front of the body, pushing you up to a seated position at the top of the mat. Hands are on your knees, palms are facing up. Take a deep inhale in. Exhale, let it go. Bring your hands to Jolly Mudra, that prayer position in front of our hearts. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, bowing down to your mudra. Taking a moment for yourself, for showing up, for trying new things, for being fearless and brave on your mat and just also for showing up on your mat. Take an inhale and exhale gratitude for the practice of yoga, remembering where it originates from and the people that have come before that have brought it to us so that we can practice it here in the West. With all the light and love in me, I bow to you and say namaste. Welcome to your time after your practice. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm turning the lights on, it always takes a minute before the iPad adjusts.
But thanks, Elizabeth, and we will see you next week. Um, DM me if you have anything that you want to work on. All right, bye, everyone.